Hi all and welcome to the section of the tutorial where we generate a phylogenetic tree for diversity analysis. In this section of the tutorial we'll be running two main commands. The first one being we get where we'll get our reference tree from the internet and the second one being chime fragment insert set which is where we insert our sequences into that reference tree. But I'll explain all of that a little bit later. Before we get into creating a phylogenetic tree, we are going to recap where our last tutorial left off. In our last tutorial, we denoised our data. So you'll see a bunch of data to underscore set or underscore anything data, which all came from our denoising step. So now that we have good quality data, we will be able to make a phylogenetic tree. For our phylogenetic tree, we'll be using the data to rep set .qza. and once we have our phylogenetic tree we will have completed the last step before we actually get to the like heart of the analysis. So let's head over to our other slide and talk about why we are doing this. So later on in a lot of Chime 2 pipelines we will need a tree for our diversity metrics. Examples of diversity metrics that need a phylogenetic tree are faith's index and weighted and unweighted unifrac. There are a couple of diversity metrics that don't need a phylogenetic tree. An example of those are Bray, Curtis, and Jacquard. And it's important to note that this phylo phylogenetic tree isn't proving relationships or like publish worthy. It's just helpful for our specific diversity metrics. There's a couple of ways to make a phylogenetic tree. In this tutorial, we're going to be using fragment insertion, which is down here, right? Um, basically what this does is it takes a reference tree right here, and then it takes our sequences that we give it, and it tries to align those sequences to the reference tree, and then insert them based on that. Okay, so now that we have a little idea of what we're doing, why we're doing it, let's start by running the commands. So first, we need, we need to run we get. So I am going to copy from this little clipboard guy and head on over to my terminal, where I'm going to paste in that command and run it. So now we've officially downloaded that from the internet. So let's make sure that we have it. So as you can see, the sepref file is there. So we're good to go. Next, we need to run the chime fragment insertion set. So I'm going to copy it from this little clipboard and again, scroll on over to my direct or terminal. Now I'm going to paste it in there. So we need to talk about what we're doing. So before you run it, we need to change this. So I'm deleting this little comment that says to update to a higher number if you can. If you are on the workshop tutorial server, you can upgrade this to two threads. If you are on your own server, you need to select based on the resources available to you. So now that we have this, you guys can run this command, and then I'll talk about what our parameters are. So, our first one. These are our sequences that we denoised, and now we are using to create our phylogenetic tree. Our reference database is our reference tree that we are using to insert our sequences into. It's also um, some alignment data and some metadata that is re relevant to the set um, command that allows it to perform the insertion. This is one of our outputs, which will output the tree that we need. And this is an output of the placements of the sequences in that tree. It's something to note that Chime doesn't actually use that current. And then lastly, our parameter threads, which allows us to run on multiple CPUs, which will make this step faster. So my command has finally run, and let's go take a look at these outputs in Chime 2 view.
go to our workshop server visualization, workshop shop dash server dot chime to dot zippy owl to look at my data. I'm going to step into my mouse tutorial and I'm going to go down here to the tree.qza file. I'm going to right click that and copy link address. Then I'm going to head over to Chime 2. Yeah. So, something to know, oh, okay, and then we're going to put a file from the web and we're going to paste that pathway that we just copied from our workshop server. So something to note is that this is a QZA. So a QZA doesn't really create a visualization like we've seen in our previous tutorials. So this is just more information. But let's just take a look at that little providence real quick. So uh, it's cool because you can move them around. So I am like to move it around so that I can visualize the path a little bit better. So this is where we imported our data. This is where we denoised our data. And this is where we created a phylogenetic tree. And this is where we downloaded our reference tree so that we could use it for this command. So um, as you can see, our little provenance graph is definitely growing. And it's kind of exciting to see, to see it take shape. So besides looking at the QZA format, we can also look at more of the phylogenetic tree by going to the interact Interactive Tree of Life um, website. So what we're going to need to do is head back over to that workshop server thing and we're needing to download that tree, tree.qza. And then we go back over to the Tree of Life website and we name our tree. I named it PD Mouse Tutorial. I'm going to choose a file from my desktop. Awesome! And now I'm going to upload this. It can take a couple of seconds to upload, but then we'll be able to see our tree of life that we created um, using Chime Fragment Insertion Step. So here it is. So again, this isn't a particularly informative tree because it's not really for us to interpret that much. It's for time to interpret, but we can kind of see how our, um, our phylogenetic tree looks like. We can also look at it in like long form or normal form or unrooted. It just kind of gives us a look at what what our phylogenetic tree looks like. Very cool. Okay, and with that, we have completed this section of the tutorial. So in this section of the tutorial, we learned how to make phylogenetic trees for Chimes diversity metrics. Making a phylogenetic tree is particularly helpful because it's used in most Chime 2 pipelines. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I hope you learned a lot.